Hi everybody, it's Dandruff with your news cartridge for Monday, March 21st, 2016. GDC is long over and a Bioware developer made some tweets that he was walking the floor wearing a t-shirt displaying their new IP. He said no one noticed. Maybe that's because that's what happens when you don't tell people about something. Nobody notices. Why don't they just tell us so we know? Alright? All right, Valve has stated that they're going to try to make VR games run more efficiently to use older hardware to reduce the cost of VR. And according to Valve's president and CEO, Gabe Newell, cross-platform play is the next step in multiplayer gaming, and he is all for the idea. Speaking of cross-platform play, developer Psyonix says that it's working. They've got it up and running, and very soon, cross-platform play will be available for everyone for Rocket League. Yay, bigger player bases. Firewatch has reportedly sold more more than half a million copies in its first month. The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion is officially 10 years old as of yesterday. Happy birthday! Final Fantasy XIV and Fantasy Star Online 2 are getting crossover DLC. AMD has added game capture recording to their Gaming Evolve software, which is now the direct competitor with Nvidia's Shadow Play. The Jackbox Party Pack 3 has been announced alongside Drawful 2, which will be available separately. The Division servers are going down for regularly scheduled maintenance tomorrow for about three hours. Two new adversary modes for GTA 5 have been data mined and they're called Inch by Inch and In and Out. Paragon, the MOBA by Epic Games, the makers of the Unreal Engine, has released the PC requirements for the game and you can see them here. And finally, the UK restaurant Meat Liquor is holding a contest that if you can eat these 20 spicy wings as fast as you can, you win a Dark Souls 3 t-shirt. Today is episode 199 for News Cartridge, and tomorrow I'm going to take the day off and eat this bag of weird Japanese treats. Join me here on News Cartridge. Oh boy, our top story of the day is about one of my favorite YouTubers, Jim Sterling. Over the weekend, it was revealed that game developer Digital Homicide, and I use the term game very loosely, has filed a lawsuit for false accusations and I quote, cause damage to reputation, damage to product, loss of product, and causing severe emotional stress. If you've never heard of Digital Homicide, it's because they make crap games supposedly using pre-made assets that they've purchased, slapped together, and then cranked out a video game. Digital Homicide did not like Mr. Sterling's review of their game The Slaughtering Grounds, which was considered by some, including Sterling, the worst video game of 2014. Digital Homicide then issued a copyright takedown against the review, abusing YouTube's copyright system. Since then, it's been a feud that I have been following ever since, including an interview months ago between Sterling and the two developers at Digital Homicide. There's a link to it down below. It's hilarious. These asshats even told Destructoid that if they retold what was going on using their own words, then they themselves would be liable. I guess I would be too, huh? Bring it. These guys are trying to censor criticism and stifle freedom of speech by casting dissent on those who do not like their product instead of trying to provide a good product. I wish Mr. Sterling the best of luck. But he won't need it. I know he won't. Oh, by the way, they're trying to crowdfund this lawsuit like the total morons they are. There's a link to it down below, but please don't donate. You would be a bigger idiot than they. Pokemon Go is coming supposedly later this year, and we finally have some footage of gameplay. It's really short. There's a link to the full video on YouTube if you want to see it for yourself, as well as links for sources for all of today's stories. And it looks okay. I'm not really sure what's going on. As you see, it's a horizontal video and it's hard to tell what is actually going on. But it's really nice to see something and a little bit about how it will work. To be honest, it looks really basic. I was hoping for a little bit more, but I guess we'll have to wait and to see how it is when it comes out later this year. Stay tuned to News Cartridge for more on Pokemon Go. Microsoft may possibly be willing to buy back your digital games. Wait, wait, hold on. Don't get your hopes up yet. In a recent survey, the question was asked if people were interested in the ability to sell back their digital games for, now sit down if you're not already, 10% of the purchase price. Potentially that means that the game you paid $60 for can net you between $2 and $6 depending on if the sale price dropped. It's nice to see if they're considering it, but GameStop currently offers more than that for their physical games. I think that they should up it to an offer similar to the percentage that GameStop is using. What do you think? 
Please leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And finally, Blizzard has released its first animated short for Overwatch. It tells the story of Winston, a giant ape who is highly intelligent and can talk. It's an absolutely lovely little 8 minute video and lets you get to know the character as well as some of the backstory of what is going on in the game. It's got action, it's got feels, it's got banana peels. If you're hyped for Overwatch like I am, then check it out while we wait for Overwatch to release on May 24th. And now we're at tomorrow's game releases for PC, Out of the Park Baseball 17, Mimpy Dreams, Nelly Kudalot, The Foul Fleet, Game Guru, Easter Game, Borstal, Candice DeBebe's Incredibly Trick Lifestyle, and Polaris Sector. For PlayStation 4, Day of the Tentacle Remastered, Republic Remastered, 101 Ways to Die, Cat Lateral Damage, and Dragon Fantasy, The Black Tome of Ice. For Xbox One, Stranger of Sword City. For PlayStation Vita, Day of the Tentacle Remastered. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you tomorrow. And two blondes fell into a black hole. One of them says to the other, it's awful dark in here, right? The other one replies, I don't know, I can't see.